guys ready to learn how to make it? So how do you make your own SCOBY? So you need, you need to brew a gallon of tea, add sugar to it, okay, and let it, let it sit overnight and cool off. You, know, you don't want to add your kombucha to it when it's hot or else it'll kill them. So once you let it cool down to room temperature, add a bottle of kombucha, cover it with a tight cloth, you know, something that's breathable, like in a, 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 cotton, a clean cotton t-shirt or something you can cut up, put over it and get a nice rubber band on there prevent anything from getting in, and then put it somewhere warm in your house. And then from there, it'll, it'll ferment. Keep it out of sunlight. The UV rays will, can kill the bacteria. So in about a week or two, a young scoby will start to form. It'll, it'll almost just look like scum on the top of the kombucha. And then you wait, you wait another month or so, and it'll, it'll be about this size after about a month. And then from there, you can use that along with the Kombucha vinegar, it'll be very strong to start your next batch, and then you know, it'll take about a week to make uh, batches of kombucha from there, once you have a, a strong mother. What teas can you use? You can use black tea, that's what you've tasted here. We, uh, you can use oolong tea, green tea, and even white tea mixed in. Does anyone know the difference between, any, between those? Some Does anyone know the difference? So the only difference between them, they all come from the same plant. It's just different ages of leaves and different levels of oxidation. So, you know, the green teas will give you a different flavor than the black tea. Doesn't Earl Grey, that has a citrus oil in it? Yes, it does. That's why it kills it. So, so you want to avoid the, uh, the teas that have added oils to it. So uh, Earl Grey has bergamot oil in it. Okay. It's a citrus oil. And, you know, it'll inter interfere with the fermentation process. How does it react to hops? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get enough. I have all that beer making. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I would recommend, you know, if you, know, if you have pesticides and stuff in it, it's not going to grow. It's not going to be as strong as a culture. So I would recommend that or, you know, get it from a good source. Um, so as far as sugars go, you can use plain table sugar, you can use evaporated cane crystals, uh, and you can use pasteurized honey. So you might ask, why, why pasteurized honey, right? You don't want any other organisms in there kind of competing against your kombucha. So I recommend using cane sugar. That way you avoid any genetic, some GMO uh, beets, beet sugar. Is the, is mm -hmm. the, um Fermentation process eat up all the sugar. Right, yeah. So, so this sugar really isn't for you. It's for the bacteria and yeast to grow and multiply and divide. All right, so some sugars that are bad for kombucha, things like molasses, they have a lot of, you know, they can have other minerals in them that will interfere with the bacteria and yeast. <coughs> so fermentation vessels. I, I ferment in glass. So I, I, I use three-gallon glass jugs, essentially. And so, yeah, and, and this would even be fine. You got, you know, small amount of plastic. You wouldn't want to seal it like this. I did this so that I could bring it in here. <laughs> so that would make alcohol if you left it like that. So, so glass is good. Ceramic, lead-free ceramic is good. And uh, even high-grade stainless steel. So essentially winemaking equipment would work. No food-grade plastic. I, I would not use food grade, food grade plastic. It's uh, you know, vinegar is acidic, so it it tends to I leach in chemicals. It's good to make yeah. beer, but not this. Yeah, <laughs> might make you rethink the beer too. I don't. <laughs> Potentially. You're probably right. Potentially. So you can see some setups there. You want to use a cloth on top with a rubber band, something tight. You want to keep out the fruit flies, but you want to let some ventilation in, so that you're not making alcohol. So there's two, two different ways to make it. You have a traditional batch, which I do. So you'll essentially make a big batch of kombucha, brew it, and let it sit there for a week or two till it gets to your desired flavor. And then you bottle it, bottle it all, except for a little amount that you then use to start the next batch. Very straightforward, very systematic. I prefer that method. Continuous brewing, you'll, you do the same thing. Let it, let it ferment till it's ready. And then you'll take out a quarter of the liquid and bottle it or drink it. And then you'll add in a quarter of sweet tea. And so it's kind of a balancing act. 
You drink it too fast, you get sweet tea. You don't drink it fast enough, you get a whole jar of vinegar. So I recommend the traditional batch method. So some fermentation tips. You know, keep, keep it in a warm area, uh, well ventilated. You want to give it nice fresh air. You don't want anywhere musty or anywhere that would promote mold. You want to use a clean towel on top. You know, make sure you secure it, secure it well. And then, you know, as, as your scobies grow with each batch, they'll, they'll get thicker and thicker, and then you, you'll be able to peel them apart, almost like layers. And keep keep your old scobies in a in a jar with some kombucha vinegar, just in case you accidentally kill a batch or you get any contamination or anything like that. It happens. So obviously, be clean and sanitary whenever you're making your kombucha. So. As far as fruits and adding other flavors and things like that, I recommend you know make your kombucha, and then add the flavors whenever you bottle. So that that way you keep your kombucha batch you know pure, and you can use it for all different kinds of flavors. You never contaminate it. You never you know potentially damage the mother. So use fresh fruit juice whenever possible. Uh, one of my favorite things is ginger root. I add it to everything. So you guys might not know what it tastes like without it. <laughs> but uh, So you can add different combinations of things. You can even use ginger? herbs. Why do I add ginger? Just gives it a, a nice clean taste and uh, gives you a lot of good nutrients. Yeah. Ginger's good for you. And, and it does, it makes it really fizzy. Be between ginger and uh, strawberries, I haven't found anything that makes it more fizzy. So you know, test the bottles as you go. Don't let them sit there for weeks at a time or they'll explode. We've done that. So here's a, a real simple kombucha recipe. One gallon of water, one cup organic white sugar, 10 organic black tea bags, a half a cup, a half a cup of your kombucha vinegar, and a SCOBY. And give it a couple weeks time and you'll have a nice batch of kombucha. If you want any more information, you can check out. Uh, Kombucha Camp's a good uh, website, and culturesforhealth.com. Just gives you some, some things to look at. There's tons of YouTube videos if you have any more things like that. If you have any ideas for flavors, let me know. I'll try them out, and we can see if you like them. Fascinating, though, huh? So your, your gut health is so important. Um, if you'd like additional reading on your gut health, the book is called Brain Maker. Um, it should be required reading for everybody that is alive. Um, if you're not alive, you don't have to read it. But if you're alive, you should read Brain Maker.